Literally, the internet is just a bunch of thick cables that run at the bottom of the ocean along with facilities like internet service providers that connect you to your destination. These computers communicate with the internet protocol suite. Every computer on the network has a unique IP address, and two computers can then transfer data with a transmission control protocol. It breaks messages into a bunch of packets, sends them through a network of wires before the receiving end puts the message back together. If you have a poor internet connection, you might have experienced packet loss, which is just if some of these packets get lost along the way. If the internet is the hardware, then the web is the software, which you can use with a browser. Every page on the web has a URL. When you type it into your browser, it looks up the IP address of the server hosting this website with a domain name system, which is like a dictionary mapping domain names to IP addresses of actual servers. After connecting to it via TCP, your browser, called the client, uses the hypertext transfer protocol to send an HTTP request to the server, which then gives a response ideally containing the contents of the web page. The actual website most often consists of three parts. An HTML file contains all the content of a website and is basically just a collection of elements, which can be text, links, buttons, and so on. A CSS file controls the visuals and makes a website look nice. But a website is useless if pressing nice looking buttons does nothing, so a language like JavaScript adds functionality. But sometimes, things can go wrong. With every HTTP response comes a response code, which carries information about the status of the response. For example, 200 means OK, and anything starting with 4 is an error, the most famous one being 404, page not found. 